Hey guys, welcome back to another sort of George Garage with me, Julian. 66 New Yorker, Miss Daisy. Time to sort out the drum brakes front and rear. Here we go. Banging. Right guys, just as a full disclosure, I have actually been into the drums on Miss Daisy. Uh, I wanted to find out what size shoes she takes. I've also had to order four new uh, wheel cylinders, got a new master cylinder to go in, as well as all the flexi hoses. But we're going to concentrate just on the shoes in this video. Um, we're going to start with the rear passenger side, then we'll move on to the front passenger side. I wanted to show you this because there is a slight difference with the self-adjusters with the older model compared to the newer model, uh, i.e. the 72 New Yorker that I'd done last year, Old Blue. Um, so yeah, there's a slight difference. Uh, if you don't know how to put them together, you've never done shoes before, obviously this is the perfect video for you. Um, thanks for watching. Here we go. Sorted, George. Bye. <laughs> That's a nice mess in there. I'll show you. Right, so this is the state of play in this one. Rear passenger side, like I say. Uh, I have, I don't know if I said it earlier, but I have actually had the drums off already purely to uh, measure the rear shoes. The rear ones on this are two and a half inch uh, and three inch on the fronts. Now, um, I think on this one, I'm sure it's, yeah, we've got a rear seal, I think, that's gone. So that'll have to be replaced. I've got one. I'm not worried about that. So that's good. It looks pretty weepy. Um, and if you sort of look as well, you can see it around this area here. So I think the rear seal needs to do it. Um, I just noticed something. This spring ah. yeah that spring you can see hang on a minute let me just clean this up two seconds right it's got rid of the cobwebs you can see it better now right this spring the short end has gone into this self adjuster the long end has gone into the screw Back over the other side, hang on. Yeah, I was right. See, I took photographs, obviously, to show um, as a reference thing for me, just to make sure that everything went back as it should, right? But you can see the short end of the spring has gone through the hole in the uh, shoe, and the long end has gone into the self-adjuster. There's the photograph that I took prior. So I have got that the correct way that it was in. Um, so it would appear that I would say that one is wrong purely because when I was putting it back together, A, it was a pain in the derriere. But also, this, can you see how that is sat there? It is just perched and if that was to slip out and let go which it did quite a few times when i was trying to put that back together uh yeah if that lets go then obviously the brakes are going to be loose in the back so somebody obviously put the spring in the wrong way around on that side because that looks a heck of a lot better and safer than what that does see so even though you take photographs as a reference, doesn't mean to say that the person that was there before got it right. So let's go back here. Yeah, see, look, that would be a lot safer, wouldn't it? Because there's nothing to come out, fall out. That's hooked in there, lovely. There's no messing about. And that's hooked in there. Right. I'll just go and change that one back over so that it's done correctly and then we'll crack on with this. 
two seconds. Right, there it is, that's better. And I'll tell you what, that went in so much easier. Unbelievable. Let's crack on. Right, just one more thing before I start. I've got to say a big thank you to Chris over at Sweet Machine. He got hold of a pair of these for me. Uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, brakes rebuild on Old Blue uh, when I've done the rear brakes. If you haven't seen that one, you can check out this cheeky little link here up in your top right hand corner of the screen and go and watch that one. Thank you. Um, I actually hurt my wrist when I was doing the, uh, the springs on the rear brakes on Old Blue. So he's got hold of one of these for me, bless his heart. This is a proper uh, a brake, shoe, spring, spanner, whatever you want to call it, blah, blah, blah. Um, mate, these make life so much easier, so much better using these uh, to remove and replace the springs. If you haven't got one, get hold of one. This one, luckily for me, is uh, made in the USA, so it's quality stuff. The cheapo Chinesium stuff, this bit here, tends to break or bend after using it like once or twice. Absolute rubbish metal. Get yourself a made in the USA pair if you can, if you do breaks quite a bit like I do. Um, so Chris, thanks ever so much, mate. I really do appreciate that, bud. Thank you, you've just saved me a lot of pain in my wrist in the future. <laughs> right, cheers. Let's crack on. <laughs> Right, top springs. Going to be using, obviously, the pliers. Uh, we're going to be using this one, and it's got like a little cam on it. So what you do, you put that over that uh, hook, okay? Twist, get the spring under that cam, and as you twist, you sort of pull down, and there it is off. Job, job. That can come out. And then, same again, on to the side, you on there, try and hook that on the cam, twist, job job. So easy, unbelievable. And basically what you can do when it's on there, okay, you can just use this other arm as a lever. You can grab that and use that as a lever. So uh, yeah, it makes it so much easier. That can come off, that can come off. Lovely, sort with George. Now we can take off the shoe holders, which is this bit here. All you need to do is grab a pair of pliers over the end. Now there is a, uh, a cross section here. Hang on, let's bring you in, there you go. So basically what you gotta do is twist this 90 degrees. And what I'll do, I'll show you when it comes off so that you can see the ends, etc., and you know what it looks like. So, right, finger behind, because there is a long pin, which is what this is. Pliers on there, grab it, push against the spring, twist, and it will come off, job, jobbed, just like that. And there's the pin at the back. There it is there, it's like an arrow head, okay, with a flat nail head on the other end. And this is what that thing looked like. Just like that. Sort with George, right. Same again with that side. Find the pin behind, grip that, push against the spring and twist. Missed, try again. Nearly, you can see him about to let go there. And there she goes. That's that, that's that, that's that. And there's the pin. Right, now we've got the top springs and the pins out. This will now collapse. So you won't really need to do anything with the bottom spring because obviously it will just fall apart. So we can just grab that lock, pull it all out. And there it goes. Job, job. Right, and there it is all apart, job jobbed. The, uh, I'm pretty sure that rear seal has definitely gone. Looking at the state of play on this uh, part brake cable here, as you can see all the oil, that's, uh, that's obviously dripped out from there. Yeah, there you go, you can see it now, can't you? You can see it a lot better now. So, 
Uh, yeah, right. So what I've got to do now is just release the, um, what do you call it, brake line from around the back here. I've put some WD-40 on there as well. Uh, so that's had a good soak. So I should take that off, take off the uh, wheel cylinder and we will give this lot a good clean. Right, back with you when that's done. Right, I'm just going to clean up the brake drums uh, <clears throat> and paint them and then they can be drying while I clean that lot up. See in a bit. Right, there's the two drums cleaned up. As you do, all the way around. Job, jobbed. And there it is done with some uh, black stone chip. I haven't got any gloss, so uh, it's in stone chip, but hey, never mind. They look tidy, I'm happy with that. Right, sort with George. Let's crack on. Right, I'm gonna get on and clean this lot up. Uh, I'm also gonna go and clean up the backing plate, change over the wheel cylinder, and then we're gonna do the rear seal. Right, there's all the bits cleaned up. Um, right, I wanted to show you this, uh, something I've noticed from uh, when I done the 72 New Yorker Old Blue back brakes. Um, there is a slight difference between the 72 and the 66. So obviously they changed that over the years. Now, what we've got here in front of us is um, everything you see is universal, basically. So left will fit right, right will fit left, whether it be the springs, whether it be the uh, wheel cylinder, arm things, springs, you name it. It's all universal, with the exception of... Now... This is what I wanted to show you. On the uh, 72, okay, the left-handed thread, as you can see, I'm undoing that, but actually it's going in. This has got a left-handed thread, okay? And obviously if I do that, it will come out. Now, on the 72s, the left-handed thread goes on the left-hand side, okay? But with the 66, the left-handed thread goes on the right hand side okay now reason for that is the self adjuster the way the self adjuster works now again on the 72 this thing here is flat whereas this has obviously got like a little s bend in it okay and also this one has got a hook where it hooks into uh, this section here okay now on the 72s what you've got is a pin that you remove from the old shoe and you put into the new shoe in one of these lugs here and that there's a hole and it slips over here now the way that these work okay this one the self adjuster works by pushing down and then it will slide back up over pushing down slide back over pushing down that way then this will come out and open up the shoes whereas on the uh, the later ones the 72 um, it works the other way it adjusts by going up and then slides down over goes up slides down over so there is a slight difference between the older one and the newer one um, the only bits that are not universal, like I say, are the ones that are either marked up with an R or an L. So you've got the self-adjuster wheel there. You've got this thing here that has also got, if you can see it in the light just there, there is an R on that one. And also this piece here. There's your R job. Oh, so hang on. My apologies. You've got the part brake lever as well. That is sided because of the way that this is here. Everything else is universal. So if you do end up sort of stripping out your back brakes and cleaning it all at the same time, um, then you can't get confused because obviously what goes on one side and what goes on the other specific is going to be marked up with either L or R. I just wanted to point that out to you. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the other thing as well. This also is different. Hang on, there's a tractor going by. That's better. Uh, also, this piece here on the uh, like the self-adjusting bit as well, this one, um, the later ones is a big square with a spring in it, whereas this one has only got the hook. So, a few slight differences. Not a lot, but they are different. Right, guys, uh, inner seal is now done. 
Uh, I've done it as a separate video. If you want to watch that, you can check out this cheeky little link here in your top right hand corner. Uh, reason being is because if people want to just watch how to do that and not the brakes as well, they're not going to find it in this video. So it was easier just to do it as a separate video. Um, right, so that's done. We've got the new wheel cylinder on and all that is literally is just, um, you've got two bolts uh, and obviously undo the uh, brake line. That pops out towards the front. Put the new one in, bolt it up from behind and that's it, job, job. Right, let's crack on with the brakes. Here we go. Right, one other thing that is uh, I want to point out to you about the brake shoes, okay? Um, what I was saying earlier about stuff being universal. Now, the left will fit on the right, right will fit on the left. However, if you look, right, if I put that up, you will see that one is longer than the other. Universal, that will fit on the other side and so will this fit on that side but the one that has the most amount of shoe okay goes to the rear now the reason for that is if i put this in briefly and i'll show you so this is how it all sits in and sets up and whatever else right so that's like that now under braking this is the rear right so Obviously, the drum is going that way. Under braking, when you hit the brakes, this one is going to be dragged forward like that. Okay, and then obviously this part of the pad is going to be up against the inside of the drum. Right now, this side, still going around that way, cannot move because it's up against that stop. So this bit has to come out that way. Same again, it's going around that way. So that is why you've got more along the bottom on that side than what you have on that side. That's the reason behind it, okay? Because this one can move out and touch the drum. This one can't. It cannot go past that stop. So that's why it is. Right, let's, uh, let's crack on and put these together. Right, first things first, the rear rather than the forward brake shoe. I like to do that one first because we've got to get on the uh, parking brake cable. It's going to sit in like so. So that's gonna pull the spring back, pull that back, and that will sit in there like that. That is in, job, job. Now what we want is Where's my pliers? There you go. Right, so we now want a pin to come in from behind. You go through there like so. When it comes to the uh, the pin and the spring and the holder to obviously hold the shoe on, right? I've said about the arrowhead, etc. The way that these guys sit is like that, all right? You've got a hole, one with a hole in it, but as you can see, it's like a, a shape of a cap, all right? So that goes onto the shoe first with the top of the cap facing out towards you. Then you get the spring that fits over. Hang on, get my glove out of the way. That fits over the cap, all right? And then obviously the arrowhead one, the slot, the cap faces in to the spring, all right? So it makes a nice little sandwich like that, okay? That's how it goes. So, right, let's put the old uh, shoes on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's the one that's got a hole. So you sit that on with the inner part facing outwards. Then you've got the spring that sits over that. If that stays there, that can go on like so and twist. And there it is in. That's that job job. Right, so that that one on there, spring on there. There you go. You get in like so. 
Right, so first off, you want to get in your part brake, sort of separator, whatever. Now, with this, you've got that spring. And if you can see, that bit there, I always tuck up under the shoe. So that needs to go in under there. Right, you go in there into the actual part brake lever. And you now go in. Move your shoe out of the way. You go in there, that spring goes up underneath like that, so it doesn't interfere with any of the springs. So that's that in. We've got this piece to go on first. That goes on over the top. You then got to put on your part brake adjuster lever cable. That can go on. Now, all it's got to do is sit there for the moment. It doesn't have to do anything else for now. Okay. That goes in to there and onto there. You put that over like so, lift it and push the spring down as you go, and that's on. And that is it. It is so simple. With this tool, it's unbelievable. It's fantastic. This is the runner for the cable. Okay, and on the back of that, there's a little bit sticking out. That goes into this hole. So that goes in there. You get your other spring. Same again, the short end goes in through that hole. Twists around. So you sit there. Pull up over. Just like that. So easy, unbelievable. Right, that's that lot. Job jobbed. Now let's go and do the bottom. Right, bottom part. First thing, your wheel, your adjustment wheel, and the cogs go towards the back of the car. So we want to get that in to there and to the side in there. So now we want to adjust this out. There you go, right, so that's just sat there. Bit of tension, that's fine. Next, let me just move you up. Your cable now wants to tuck in behind the little pulley, the little groove. So that sits in there like so and comes down. Okay, now what you wanna get is your self-adjuster arm thing. You wanna put the hook of that into that hole and that will sit up that end. The hook here goes through this hole here and sits in, right, you sit in there and you sit in there. Right, so that's that in that position, okay? Now what you wanna do is get your spring Hook that in through there as well, okay? And then this hook goes into that big slot there. Now you don't need really any pliers or anything like that, but I am because I'm going to save my wrist. That comes across and just sits in there like that. There's your brake shoes done. Right, last but not least, just adjust the drum to the shoes. Or adjust the shoes to the drum, should I say. Basically, put that on. It's slight, all you want is a slight bit of drag. And I'll be honest with you, that, that's actually fine. I did have to adjust up the uh, driver's side, but this side is fine. Look at that. Don't have to adjust that. Right, all I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of copper ease just around here so that uh, it doesn't rust itself together. Uh, like if you need to take the drum off, because I've had that before a couple of times, they've been an absolute pain in the bum to get off. So. Just put a bit of 
copperies around this edge here and that will help uh, in the future when you need to take the drum off right job jobbed that's it right front here we go I'm just giving this a quick clean up on the actual hub because it's easier <coughs> to uh, clean it up hit in situ than what it is out because obviously you've got all the grease etc like behind here right let me just do this and I'll come back right sort of jaws how's that done what I'm going to do now is just turn the wheel one way like so now when you do that don't panic if you start getting power steering fluid dripping out and dripping on the floor I've got some cardboard underneath there um, that is standard if you haven't got your um, engine running and you turn your your wheels sometimes the power steering uh, fluid tends to leak out so if that happens that's normal don't worry right now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna WD-40 this castle nut here uh, I'm gonna also do this nut uh, and also the bolt I think it's that one there the bolt which holds in the uh, wheel cylinder to obviously the backing plate and I shall do the same on the other side there is a reason for that I'll show you in a bit right let's just do the other side sort of George. that one as well as you do because that's the uh, this is the clip that holds the flexi into the frame and obviously there's your brake pipe underneath so we give that a good old squirt as well I'm running out right sort of George just crank on now what you want to do is get yourself a screwdriver and put it in between the drum and the cap and you can just twist that and it will come out there you go she's coming out look at that there you go there's your cap off now I have already said that I've been in here and what you should have in here is a cotter pin or a split pin okay that goes down through all right like so uh, I've already been in here so there was no point in uh, putting that back in because obviously it was coming off again so so now you can take off the little castle cap and that's what she looks like okay with a load of teeth around the edge all right and this should be there you go that's quite loose which is correct uh this is one and one sixteenths so you can put that on put a socket on and just undo it obviously it's hand tight which is correct so that will come off like so and that can just go and sit in the cap as well then you know where everything is and you've also got a washer with a big tooth on it and the tooth sits in that groove hang on let me just clean this up a little bit you can see the tooth on that washer that can go and sit in the cap as well now what you want to do is just you can if it doesn't come out you can just pull the drum off a little bit push the drum back on again and you can get hold of that outer bearing and there she is right and now your drum will just slide off right you will just pull straight off like so and that is what you're left with just the shoes and the wheel cylinder uh, and obviously the springs uh, obviously this looks rather empty in here because a you haven't got the half shaft in the way here and also you don't have the uh, parking brake lever and then the arm that goes across because as the parking brake gets pulled across this arm 
pushes across and forces that shoe out onto the drum. That's how that works. Should have told you that on the back brakes, but never mind. Um, so, yeah, so it looks a bit bare, but believe it or not, apart from the parking brake and that bar across there, we're actually exactly the same as the rear. So, right, let us uh, let me just clear off that spindle of the grease just to get it all off. Let me do this and I'll come back. And there it is done, all clean. Now these obviously come apart just the same as the rears. So again, I'm gonna use the cam on the end of this one to get underneath that spring. Give this a twist and drag down at the same time. And you will just come off. Same again on the other one. Give that a twist. And away she goes. You can come out. You can come out. You can come out. Get some pliers at the back. Push and twist. Oh, nearly. That's about to let go. There you go. That's better. You're off. You're off. Pin is out. There you go. Lovely. Sort of George. Let's unhook you. Thank you. Shaming it on the other side. Let's just destroy the brakes. Why not? There you go. There it is. Lovely. Sort of George. Whack the camera. Take the pin out. Get off. Right. Job, job. Right, I've just put this on full lock left. Now, the reason I WD 40 all that lot is because I'm going to undo them. Reason being, now I've got, I've got here a half inch spanner, and this particular side looks as though I can actually get on there and undo that one. So let's see if it actually does undo. It's going to, isn't it? It's going to call me a liar. Now, I'm going to undo these. I'm going to take these top two out and I'm just going to loosen these just so that this backing plate can actually lean forward towards the outside of the car because, uh, like I said, this is going to call me a liar now because it's obviously come undone. But on the other side, I've already done the uh, front driver's side, the front left, I could not, because of the angle of that bolt, it was sort of down at this angle here, I could not, for love nor money, get a socket or spanner on there to undo it. Now, the other thing with this as well is that, whereas on the rear, the you've got the hole here for where the wheel cylinder sits, and then it's got like an ear cut out where the bolt goes through. These don't have a cutout, they just have a hole. So that bolt has to literally come out. You can't sort of loosen it and sort of like try and wiggle it out from the slot. You physically have to take that out. And although, let me see how far I can get this out because you haven't got much in the way of room to try and get these in and out. And I just find it so much easier to move that backing plate. See, by the time you get this coming out, that bolt holding in the wheel cylinder is now actually hitting against this uh, your spindle, like the back of the spindle as it were, and you haven't got room so you kind of got to do both of them and then pull it forward and then undo a bit more and then pull it forward and undo a bit more just to get those bolts out and it is an absolute nightmare. Like I said, the other side, I couldn't physically get on to the bolts to actually loosen them. So I'm going to, like I say, take out these top two and then loosen the bottom two it gives you a chance then to clean out the threads, put in new split pins, cotter pins, uh, and also clean up the bolts. And also 
this will lean forward you can get it in properly you can also get to the uh, flexi hose which is on this side um, yeah it just makes it a lot more easier so that's what we're gonna do here we go sort of George right bottom two bolts loosened top two bolts are out that can now come away at the top here and you can even get now a ring spanner on it and away she goes you can actually get to it you've got room trust me the uh, the other side was such a pain it was unbelievable yeah look at that it's nice and easy now right let me take this off and I'll come back right that's both of the bolts out and that now the whole lot can just pull through and go in the bin and because obviously you've got room there now you can get a wire brush behind and just give that backing bit a bit of a clean right let's crack on and put this lot back together here we go right before i do that this is what i was referring to with the uh where the wheel cylinder goes and the two bolts go through you've actually got a hole rather than a slot because on the rears that piece of metal there is missing and same as that side so you could you could end up undoing one bolt completely half undoing the other bolt and then sort of maybe maneuver it out so as it comes out via the slot but you can't with the fronts you cannot with the front you physically have to take that bolt out uh, and you can see there's not a lot of room behind there so there you go there's not a lot of room so when you can move that forward it really makes a difference down there you know right i'm going to put the shoes on and then uh, we'll come back when they're on exactly the self same process as the rears um let me do that I'll put the wheel cylinder in and the uh, the new flex seat and then we'll come back and we'll do the uh, the drum on the spindle. Right, see you in a bit. Right, just a quick one before I put these in. Obviously, new shoes, right? Old shoes. Now, you can see how much meat is still left on these, all right? But... And the back ones were the same. That got to be cracked straight down the middle. Hence why they're being replaced. I don't trust them. Okay, right, we're back in. Everything's on. Same again, a bit of uh, copperese on the old pads on the backing plate where the shoes uh, rest up against. Uh, this one, again, is uh, left-handed thread on the right-hand side. Same as the rears. Uh, right, what we're going to do now, we're going to put some grease on this spindle so that there's some on there, uh, and then we'll actually put the uh, put the drum on. Right, that's got the grease on. Now let's put on the drum. As you do, here we go. Where are you? There. You go over and on in there. Now what you want to do is get your bearing... I've repacked this with some fresh grease. Right, that's in there. Next to go on is the washer with the groove in it. Now that I've cleaned it up, you can actually see it better. There you go, that's what it looks like. So that now slides on into there. You go over there like so. Get your nut, put that on. Screw him on. Right. Tighten it down. Let me just... Uh, like so. Now, as you can see, obviously that's stopping. It's not going very fast. Now what you do is just back it off just a tad there you go right hang on let's get the feel for that just 
just wants to be pinch tight. There you go. And that's that. That is tight enough. Lovely. And that's stopping beautiful. Basically, tighten up the nut so that it's a, a, a bit of tension on it. As you saw, that basically stopped virtually straight away. You back it off and then just apply a fraction of tension and not a lot, literally, just so that it's in place. And she's running beautiful. Now what you want to do is get a little sort of castle nut washer thing to cover. Uh, you want to get the you want to get the teeth so that they have a gap in this little groove here. So find it seat note. Yeah, there you go. That'll do. Or is that gonna go around one more? You don't like me. That'll do. There you go. You'll always find a place in the end. Get your cotter pin straight down. Job jobs. Clean out the old grease. And wrap that. Come on, grab hold of it. There you go. Wrap that around. Like so. There you go. Pinch you on. There you go. Job, job. And that is it. Just like that. That's coming to a lovely stop. Sort of, George. Now what you've got to do is put your cap on. I've cleaned it out. Just put some grease in it. That should be enough. And then you just put that over like so. And then just give it a tap around with your hammer. All you've got to do is just a gentle tap like that. I don't know why people absolutely beat the hell out of these and they dent them a bit daft. You don't need to hit them hard. Right. And that is that. And there it is with the wheel on. Just give it a nice gentle touch and she'll keep going. She'll keep rolling and come to a beautiful stop. Sort with yours, that's that bearing adjusted lovely. Banging. Right guys, that's it for this one. I hope this video helps you out in some way. Uh, as we see, the self adjusters are different on the 66 to what they are on the 72 when we done Old Blue last year. Um, so if you are gonna order up some parts, if you need them, make sure you get them for the right year because obviously they adjust in a different way. Uh, Left-handed thread goes on the right-hand side on the 66. Left-handed thread goes on the left-hand side on the 72. Um, as we see, the drums on the front adjust and set up exactly the same as what they do on the rear. Obviously, on the rear, you've got the, uh, you've got the um, half shaft in the way. That's why it looks a bit empty on the front ones. Um, the only difference, obviously, when the drum comes off, you've got to take it off on the spindle. I hope the setup um, that I've done helps you out if you've never done it before. Um, nip over and check out Chris as well over at Sweet Machine. He's got some good stuff going on over there. He's sorting out his service truck. We are nearly on the road. He's only got one or two videos to go, I think. Then hopefully we'll have a test drive. Can't wait for that, I tell you. Um, guys, like, share, hit the subscribe button if you wouldn't mind as well, please. Uh, it would help this channel grow. And thanks ever so much to those that have already subscribed. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one, guys. It's Sorted George Garage. Bang it.